Welcome to our introduction to the special interest group on values-based and sustainable innovation. I also want to introduce uh, Florian, uh, who's running this special interest group together with me, and uh, Kirill Ivanov. Hi, guys. Hello. Good morning from my side as well. Hello. Okay, yeah, I already pasted a little video that we prepared when we introduced this uh, special interest group into the chat. I think it briefly explains some of the basic concepts and the ideas why we started this special interest group and why we invite you to participate in this. Um, for today, I kind of changed the introduction here a little bit last minute to yeah, address more the new focus topic of this year's conference, which is innovating in times of crisis. And so let's take that as a starting point. So one thing uh, the current COVID crisis shows is that values, and in this case, values of health and caring, caring not just for one's own health, but also for the most vulnerable, can be a strong driver for innovation and for cultural change. It makes it obvious uh, that in order to motivate and implement such values-based change, it's not enough to just declare it and to declare such values and put them into uh, the walls of uh, an office entry hall or someplace. Instead, they need to be related to individual situations, to, uh, they need to be specified and put into action in the context of daily work practices and innovation efforts. Only then we can see what we've been seeing yesterday, for instance, in the um, keynotes as well, in new innovations that resulted from this crisis so far, from the most obvious ones like fashion producers creating masks overnight to soccer arenas populated with the uh, printed portraits of uh, soccer fans, uh, up to the point of all of us introducing new ways of collaboration, like having this conference now in a complete online format. Some tools are available to do so, and we will have a look at, just very brief look into some of them, um, but not enough are available in order to uh, review and bring global values down to really project specific insights directives and measures. However, the situation and the current debates around how to overcome the economic crisis that also resulted from it also show that a crisis is not enough to meet the great challenges that we are facing today, like to mitigate climate change and loss in biodiversity. And that brings us to the second part in the title of our special interest group, the sustainable innovation part. Um, how to meet these challenges and how uh, then taking that together, how can we change and apply our values, which is what's most important for all of us or what we actually care about, uh, to meet these challenges through business activities and in particular through innovation and how can we make sure that sustainability is not just a written word in an entry hall uh, of an office building or a title of an annual report, but an integral part of our innovation practices, methods, and decisive, a decisive measure for innovation success. So I um, think that brings us then to what this special interest group is about. Yeah, so like uh, we noted here on the special interest group website, please have a look at that as well if you haven't done yet. The purpose of the special interest group is to better understand the functions and impact of values, cultures, and sustainability considerations on uh, innovation and its management. Um, a little bit on the background. So um, myself, I'm coming from a user-centered design and human-computer interaction kind of background. and. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, also have the professor Matthias Rauterberg, who guided my PhD thesis many years ago uh, in the next session also. So that was part of my background, but then 
working more in the innovation management domain uh, as and Florian and others see the importance of moving from a user-centered design and a customer centricity to some kind of stakeholder inclusiveness and including addressing additional stakeholders, not just the customers or not just the employees of an organization. We saw um, the need to move from customer needs and short-lived interests to values and like notions of the desirable that are held by a social group or individuals. And uh, we saw like every company, that every company pursues values and normative orientations, just like every company that likes to or not does have a business model. Um, the question is not if a company should pursue certain values, but how it does work with the values of its employees and its customers and the different stakeholders it engages with. And innovation can be good or bad. We saw that from many unintended consequences of great innovation projects. Um, so it should be really managed carefully based on what we actually care about. And that brings us back to the issues of values. Florian and I, we wrote a book about this whole approach of values-based innovation management. It was published like three years ago and <clears throat> we worked on almost 30 cases showing that innovation cannot be well understood, designed or managed without recurring to the values and normative orientations of those being involved. And I think that's a strong thesis but it can be nicely shown in numerous cases, like uh, the case of Ecosia. And we're happy to have a speaker from Ecosia, Corey Wyron, later on uh, today in our panel. It can be shown in cases like Aravind Eye Care Systems, um, that only if you take the values of the founders in that case and the normative orientations, the mission of that company into account, you can understand its whole innovation ecosystem and why they came up with certain innovations in uh, processes, products, business models, and uh, innovations in their whole corporate culture they're applying. Another thing that we learned from studying all these cases is that values and values-based innovation in some respect is not a matter only of non-profit organizations or not even only of social businesses, but uh, of a large variety of even profit-oriented businesses and organizations. Um, and we learned a lot from some of these companies like IBM, where we had the um, chance to interview some of the protagonists who conducted something like a values jam to leverage the uh, values of the employees in order to frame innovation activities and to give a boost to its whole innovation culture in the beginning of the 2000s. Um, why do we need this special interest group? One reason is you saw in some cases <clears throat> you cannot understand an innovation ecosystem without recurring to these values. At the same time, we see <clears throat> that values remain widely untapped as sources and drivers for innovation. Related frameworks barely cover the role of different stakeholder values. Um, novel facilitation methods are needed to manage values for innovation, uh, including the reframing of existing methods. And we did that for business modeling, or you can do it for agile retrospectives and agile management. Um, we need methods for developing new collaborative and experiential and practice oriented interventions. And we're doing that in a European research project named Gamify. And we'll have sessions coming up on that as well tomorrow. Um, and also, we need new methods to uh, assess the impact of uh, such values and values based measures like mission, vision, statements of uh, the purpose of the organization and not just of the organization as a whole, but of uh, individual innovation projects. We can show which kind of potentials uh, values can have to drive innovation on different management levels, on an instrumental management levels where they can serve as a lever for service product and process innovation for strategic innovation and normative innovation. And that's quite important, I think, for this approach as well, 
to not understand values primarily as restricting factors coming from state regulation, right? So when that happens, usually it's too late or chances have been missed to uh, sparehead uh, societal developments in business. Um, but to see an enabling role of these values, um, yeah, to really uh, stay in front of the pack, so to say. We um, differentiate different potentials of values to integrate diverse stakeholders into um, projects to provide a directive uh, function in the situation that is characterized by uncertainty. And we see a generative potential where values can be used as a heuristic to come up with new ideas or new even KPIs or measures uh, for progress of innovation. I mentioned that, uh, I mean, this is a whole yeah, set of activities and templates that we can use and introduce. So usually you start with values in order to define a purpose, a mission and a vision of an organization, but we shouldn't end there, but move on to doing this for individual innovation projects. And I will not go too deeply uh, now into the, uh, other methods we're having. We're dealing with a couple of questions in the special interest group and want to uh, get you engaged and involved in doing that together with us. So one is about the phenomenology. How do values and culture impact and direct innovation and its management? I think we've seen several examples of how that can be done, how, what are good practices in that domain, like the case of IBM, like the case of Aravind, like the case of um, interface when it comes to sustainability oriented innovations. Um, but we want to understand this even better and uh, based on more empirical evidence. Um, also tools and methods, what are appropriate research facilitation and management methods to really work with these values and make sure they become an integral part of an uh, organizational culture, how to design or reframe methods to leverage these potentials that I mentioned, and how to estimate, manage, and measure the impact of innovation on values-based goals. So if you're striving for safety of uh, scooter families, like uh, Indian Tata group did, uh, when they were developing the Nana, then you should not only be measuring the economic uh, goals uh, that are associated with such a project, but you should also um, get an idea on how, and not even only an idea, but uh, evidence on uh, and how far you reach these uh, yeah, safety related goals through your uh, new product innovation, which was the Tata Nano at the time. We have a special in, uh, issue coming up with the iGym journal and you're all invited to uh, submit uh, your works there. Um, the title is Managing Values for Innovation, uh, Cases, Methods and Theories. Um, editing editors are myself, Florian and John Besson, who are supporting Joe Titt, who is the uh, managing direct uh, editor for the iGym uh, journal. We're inviting empirical studies, research and facilitation methods and theoretical contribution on everything relating to managing values for innovation. And as you see, the submission deadline is already coming up um, end of August. So if you have an ISPEN paper or another conference paper that you want to advance and want to uh, contribute to this journal, please contact myself, Florian or John Besson. Um, to do so. There's a web page and um, maybe Kirill can also paste some of uh, these links here into the chat. So if you want to look it up, you do not need to write down the, um, yeah, the URL here from my slides. So that's it for a brief introduction into values-based uh, innovation management. Um, let's see if we have any questions, um, or I don't know, F F 
Florian, if you want to add something, I think we prepared this short overview together. So I hope we covered the most important aspects. Um, yeah, but let's see if someone wants to add anything or if we have any questions uh, we can reply to. Well, maybe just um, thanks a lot, Henning. Um, so I think this was a very comprehensive introduction to the main ideas of this new special interest group. And I would just like to motivate you to to take a, a closer look at our call for papers um, because this SIG is just starting. And um, I, I would say the special issue is kind of our first signature project, so to speak, where we would like to show um, the variety of, of research and topics um, that the SIG will be able to cover. And um, the special issue will be the first opportunity to do so and to build uh, a little new community around the topics we are proposing here. And um, if you look into the call for papers, you will see it's, it's about diverse um, phenomena, um, but also research methods and tools at the different intersections between the personal individual level, values and innovation, the organizational level, or maybe even on the national cultural level, and how this relates to values and innovation in organizations. Um, so you see the title of the SIG, it's values based and sustainable innovation. And um, the sustainability angle is something uh, I, I'm trying to deliberately push within this SIG. Um, and the idea is that um, values based innovation allows to, to look at very different phenomena, very different contexts. Um, and um, sustainable innovation is kind of the primary case of, of a form of values-based innovation that we would like to, to focus on in the special interest group. And that's also part of, of the special issue we're going to create. So, so if you're working on something, you know, in the best case at the intersection of organization or individual values and sustainability, so then it's a perfect match for the special issue. Um, but, but please check it out, even if you're you know, looking into more sustainability related things in your research. Right, I would add on to this. It's also, I would say a bit the other way around that uh, we can consider sus including sustainability as a normative goal as part of the basic set uh, of organizational goals that we should strive for because it creates kind of the precondition to pursue uh, further goals like, I don't know, striving for beauty, striving for nonviolent communication. I mean, this is all uh, part of uh, such a game and part of the preconditions to facilitate also the values-based uh, approach to innovation. Like someone, I think Browngard said also, sustainability is enough, it's not enough. Uh, we're striving for real quality in uh, the different domains that uh, we're working for and that uh, we want to advance. So here's okay. a question, here's a so question have... uh, from Andre Martinuzzi. Uh, I think we met some conference some years ago. Uh, so the question is, um, what's the relation between sustainability innovation and responsible innovation? Sure, maybe people might wonder about um, the relationships, and I would say overlaps and complementarities between these concepts, um, particularly because there's a special interest group on responsible innovation within ISPIM. Um, so there, there are papers available on, on this conceptual um, discussion uh, on the different definitions of these concepts, but very roughly in a nutshell, um, First of all, I would say there's a lot of overlap between sustainability innovation and responsible innovation, for example, due to the fact that it's considering stakeholders uh, quite a lot, the different needs of stakeholders in relation to innovation. Uh, it's, it's a lot about taking on a responsibility as an innovator, and in this case as an entrepreneur or as a company. Um, in, in my understanding of the literature, responsible innovation is maybe a more, it, it's maybe a broader concept. It's maybe more generic. It's about this idea of, you know, giving innovation a certain direction that's, for example, aligned with the needs of society. 
whereas sustainability comes from a certain angle where it's about considering particularly ecological and social issues in an integrated way in innovation. And, and that's just my reading of the literature. It might be wrong in, in your view, but I would say that responsible innovation is maybe broader, more generic, more, more general concept, whereas sustainability innovation has this certain normative orientation, for example, in following the idea of sustainable development. And, but in this case, again, it's, it's, you know, it's due to the negotiations of the involved stakeholders, what sustainability means in a particular case. So I think there might be opportunities to, to go deeper into these discussions. Um, I would, first of all, say there's sort of fruitful overlap between both. Um, but as you can clearly see, there are also different communities behind these different. Yeah, there's a very nice article, I don't know if that was by Adams, um, that's discussing these differences and similarities between the two concepts. Also, I would say uh, responsible innovation coming from yeah, European agendas on science and technology has a stronger focus, I would say, on uh, yeah, these more technological aspects on issues of techn technology assessment. Um, making sure the outcomes of an innovation project are uh, not against the interests of society. Whereas in this special interest group, I would say we are more focusing on yeah, different practices to facilitate uh, values-based innovation to reach sustainable development goals, for instance. And we will have a very nice, I think, session uh, presentation coming up in uh, the lab of tomorrow, for instance, an initiative by German GEZ in our next session here that nicely shows how you can start with uh, normative orientation on sustainability uh, goals in order to drive innovation processes. And yeah. you can, of course, associate it to some kind of responsible behavior, but for sure it would not be the first association you'd come up with, right? But yeah, there's uh, literature really discussing the similarities and differences. And if you just write me an email, I'll be happy to forward you that these articles I came across here. Yeah, so maybe maybe one more comment. Andre was um, just um, adding to his question. I think it's about whether or how we deal with this um, tendency in some parts of the literature to distinguish between sustainability more in a if I got it correctly, ecological or green approach versus more CSR ethics or social approaches. Uh, so, so here I would say that um, uh, our, our approach is more to see sustainable innovation as an integrated a concept where ecological and social issues are not kind of divided. So my reference point still, although no, we have we had the Millennium Development Goals, we now have the Sustainable Development Goals. My, my reference point still is the Brundtland report where this you know, global notion of sustainable development has been discussed in an integrative way, understanding that you know, we, need, you know, we need healthy ecological systems to have healthy social systems. So my approach, our approach would always be to take in an integrated perspective. And if, if there's an innovation, you know, just deeply focused on, on green production processes or something, I would always ask for the social implications, right? So it's, it's more about taking this integrated approach. Okay. Um, so I see there's another question here from Klaus Fichter. Um, so about the next activities in the special interest group, I think I already mentioned the, uh, a uh, special issue uh, with iGEM um, that you can ho hopefully also see in the chat. Um, we have, um, we're working on like a European research uh, proposal to uh, pursue these activities and especially the connection to everyday practices within organizations uh, to explore this uh, in a much deeper way that we had the chance to do so up to now, especially using ethnographic methods. And um, yeah, we are uh, together with the Border Step Institute, we are hosting this and the next uh, ISPIM conference uh, with values-based and sustainable uh, innovation as focus topics. So of course we wanna 
contribute to these conferences and just invite all of you to uh, yeah, participate in that. So if you have any ideas, if you are dealing with these topics yourself and if you want to share some podcasts, if you want to participate in the special interest group, uh, yeah, please, please contact us. So we're just starting off here and um, we're very happy to uh, collaborate with all of you. Um, Henning, just a second. So Klaus uh, from Fordsheim, he said it's it's a bit sad that the audience cannot see who is participating, how many people are here. So uh, Klaus, and you got three thumbs up, so it's an issue. Um, now we are, at the moment, we are 42 in, in this group. And um, so looking at the list of names, it's many people we already met yesterday. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the state of the art, 42 at the moment. Okay, I think that already brings us to an end, almost. So um, I want to invite you also to our next session where we will have um, Matthias Rauterberg uh, from the University of Eindhoven who will tell us about values in the design process and Sven-Uwe Müller from uh, German GIZ who will talk about values-based innovation management in the lab of tomorrow, an initiative there uh, launched to yeah, drive uh, entrepreneurship in uh, emerging economies. Um, make sure you're joining our panel this afternoon uh, together with Corey Wyron as well, a product manager at Ecosia, together with uh, Roman meyer andre uh, from TÜV Nord Mobility and uh, Stefan Schaltegger who um, yeah, is a professor for uh, corporate sustainability in uh, the Leuphana University in uh, Lüneburg. So it would be great to see you for the next uh, activities and sessions as well. And yeah, with these words, I want to thank you for your participation today.